Hello, my name's Adrian. This is another Excel at the office.com video. So here I'm going to show you, first of all, how to, um, in Audacity, so I'm using Audacity, how to enhance the volume of your audio, i.e. that's called Amplify, and then how to reduce the echo that you might hear, uh, which is called uh, reverberation I learned. So before we get into that here's a couple of minutes outlining the problem. If you know your problem skip forward a couple of minutes. So first of all I've recorded this um, short piece of audio in my bathroom. Don't fear I wasn't doing anything untoward at the time. I just shut the door to get the terrible sound quality of the walls and hard surfaces bouncing across one another. And first of all, the problem is, as you can see in Audacity, the bars, the squiggly lines aren't extended very much towards the outer part of the scale. So you want them up between 0.5 and 1 or minus 0.5 and 1. Um, and secondly, um, there is an echo. So let's listen to it. Hello, I'm recording this in a bathroom. So there is a bit of an echo. So you notice that towards the end there, particularly this bit where I said there is a bit of an echo, I was um, raising my voice somewhat to exaggerate that. So there's a slight echo there, but I've edited um, audio where the sound quality is um, pretty terrible. Like, for example, if you're recording in a large room with your phone in the middle of the room, it sounds like you're really far away and there's some echo off the walls or what I've learned in audio circles is called reverberation. So if you try and find videos on reducing the echo, as I did, um, you'll have no luck. It's all a load of nonsense and gobbledygook and you'll end up with a load of um, uh, rubbish that doesn't actually help you. So this one, I'm going to show you two things. So I'm going to make it louder and I'm going to reduce the echo. Um, so Audacity is really handy free software. Um, so a bit about Audacity is free software, open source. Um, you can e record and edit audio quite visually. However, there's quite a learning curve, especially if like me, you don't know anything about the sound industry and the terminology is a learning curve that you're not particularly keen on. So here in my other video, or I've done another video, sorry, on Audacity, showing you how to reduce background noise. Luckily in this one, I, you can't see any background noise because there's not a lot of uh, squiggliness in the bits between where I'm talking. Uh, so watch that one if you want to see. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is make it louder in, um, in sound file um, information in the sound industry, making it louder means amplify. So I need to look for the amplify setting and here it is. So I'm going to first of all select all of my audio. There's a top and bottom version of the audio because that's the left and right um, speaker sound. So it depends if you've recorded things in mono rather than stereo you'll probably on, you'll have only one um, squiggly line graph showing the volume of sound. But anyway, select all I'm going to go to uh, effect, sorry, volume and compression, and then amplify. Now, what Audacity is very good at is all the settings um, that you need to edit sound. What it's not great at is usability, um, if you're completely unfamiliar with this sort of thing. So, um, but what it does do is it creates a pretty good default. I tend to, when I'm amplifying something, I let it go to the default, but then I bring it down a notch uh, just so it's not so exaggerated. So I'm going to amplify this by just under 10 decibels. Now, one note uh, that you might bear in mind, if you've got real the occasional squiggly line that brings it right up here, but everything else is really quiet, then what you need to do first is a limiter, and I'll, I'll do that in a separate video. This is all pretty even and it recognizes I need to amplify the whole lot. So I'm just going to click apply and there you go. My audio file is a lot healthier now. Everything's been made louder as indicated by um, the 
extension of the upper and lower bounds of my audio if I zoom in. This is all the audio file and it's much closer to the 1 plus 1 or minus 1. It's between the 0 0.5 and 1. So that's where you want to amplify things to. Um, if I zoom back out. So that's amplification done. Um, the next thing and the trickiest thing, but I'm going to make it simple for you, is reducing reverb a reverb or reverberation. So that is, in layman's terms, like my simple brain understands it, sounding like you're in a, a distant box or a large room, just generally uh, echoey and uh, yeah, like you're on a public speaker or something in a in a cathedral or Glastonbury where there's speakers everywhere and you hear that kind of echo all around the place. So this one is under effect, delay and reverb and oh, forget the echo, you don't want to use that because in uh, technical lingo it's called reverb. So now this is baffling to most people. There's a whole heap of settings and sliders here. Um, but I'm going to show you the shortcut uh, that you want. Uh, first of all, it might be good if you're not sure what you're doing, as I wasn't, go to factory presets, choose one of the vocals or even a small room setting um, and have a listen, have a try of that and adjust from there because you'll only need to adjust a couple of sliders. So first of all, I'm going to uh, make it awful to give you an idea of what uh, not to do. Um, so the room size is massive. There's a bit of a, let's whack the pre-delay up. Um, there's a lot of reverb and yada, yada, yada. So let's preview this. Oh my goodness, that's really exaggerated. Uh, but what happens when you bring the reverb uh, down. Oh, that's why the dry gain kind of reduces the volume. Let's preview that again. Hello. I'm recording this in a bathroom. So, so you see what I mean by reverb? So it's that kind of like you're on a, a tannoy or something awful. So I'm going to set a preset whereby it's in a small room. Let's go for small room bright. But what I don't, if I preview this, Hello. I'm recording this in a bathroom. So now what that's done is added to the echo at first, but the way to bring that down is this reverberance slider from 0 to 100% it goes. So bring that down to 0 because you don't want any reverb. Um, the room size you might want to bring down as well, a touch. Um, so if I preview that now, we'll hopefully get rid of all that echo. Hello, I'm recording this in a bathroom. So, so that now sounds like I'm a lot more closer to the mic. It sounds a bit cleaner audio. It's taken away a lot of that um, echo. And if um, I'll just show you what the pre-delay does. If you whack it up, again, it kind of adds like you're on a kind of... Um, a 1950s Elvis microphone playing in uh, at Wembley Stadium or something. Listen to this. Hello. I'm recording this in a bathroom. So it's got that kind of sound to it, like uh, you know the big announcements with a crowd in the Hunger Games. Those silver microphones that kind of come across like a tannoy again. So the pre-delay, I tend to whack that right down as well. So pre-delay down, reverberance down everything else because it's uh, not really um, dry gain just adjusts the volume down a bit wet gain uh, you can leave that where it is so if I preview this Hello. I'm recording this in a bathroom so now that has taken away all that kind of tannoy echo and reverberance and reverberation um, so in short pre-delay reverberance are your main two sliders but also don't have the room size too big either because that's what what it room size is doing is emulating 
uh, for you if you wanted say for example you're recording uh, vocals in terms of music and you want to sound like a bit of a kind of uh, a hanging prolonged to your note then the room size and reverberance going up and such is useful but if you're recording uh, sound like an interview or a podcast or spoken word um, then whack those right down and then finally the final step is to apply that to your track you see that it's kind of reduced the overall volume a bit but other than that it doesn't look like it's done a lot but what it has done if I zoom in to a piece of audio it will have um, reduced these tails after after the um, after the main speech so those tails are much shorter uh, than before and if I just zoom out to the um, full size of the audio using this quick zoom here I'm gonna um, select all and when you've selected all of it you can now file and export uh, export the audio as an mp3 file wherever you choose to export it so one last time let's listen to this quality audio hello i'm recording this in a bathroom so there is a bit of an echo so even that end bit where I'm kind of almost shouting, saying there is a bit of an echo, that echo has now been reduced. So that is the really handy software of Audacity and um, how you can first of all amplify stuff um, to make your blue bars wider, which means it's louder. And secondly, um, reduce the reverberation or what you might call the echoey sound uh, from your audio file. Um, particularly if you've, say for example, you've put your phone down in the middle of a table in a large kitchen and interviewed somebody, you both sound a bit far away from the microphone and there's a bit of an echo around the room, well using those two edits plus a bit of noise reduction, you will enhance the audio file as if you've used um, a half decent micro microphone each. Um, so I hope you found that helpful. Uh, again, my name's Adrian. I run Excel at the office dot com or Ito dot blog as a, a kind of shorthand to my site. So have a look at the blog page there. You'll find a heap of information. And if you like this or found um, or learned something, uh, by all means, uh, comment and like below. And if you'd like to um, buy me a coffee to help this content flowing, it'd be much appreciated. You can download. Uh, uh, you can donate sorry a few quid on my website which i'll link below thanks for your time and take care